Bonjour, chers amis. Je suis Magnus Lausson, directeur des collections au Musée national de Stockholm. Malheureusement, je, je commence avec de, de, de faire mes excuses parce que je vais parler en anglais, mais je suis assisté ici. Euh, et, euh, je vais parler sur les artistes suédois à Paris pendant le, le 18e siècle, et, mais je vais commencer avec les, de donner un, un, une idée sur les, euh, les relations euh, artistiques et, et politiques euh, de, de l'époque. The 18th century was the high watermark in artistic relations between France and, and Sweden. French art had a very powerful influence in Sweden, always in connection with political alliances between the countries. In the field of art and architecture, too, there was a common ground The Swedish king, Charles XII, had a passion for court festivities, as well as interior decoration and vast gardens in a French manner, and it was all staged by his surintendant. That was the title used in Sweden, actually, for Nicodemus de Sien the Younger. A whole army of French painters and sculptors and craftsmen moved to Stockholm, and, and I'm happy to, to, to point out Dr. Hinnerscher, who had wrote a dissertation about these artists uh, uh, and their activities in Stockholm in the late 1690s and early 18th century. But unfortunately, all this was put at an end due to the Swedish defeat at Poltava in 1709. The French returned, although this was not the end of either political or cultural ties between the countries, because in 1728, Nicodemus de Sien the Younger managed to resume the building of the royal palace in Stockholm. And, and there you can see uh, one of the major galleries designed by, by de Sien. And here, portraits of him. Yes, that's it. Uh, by uh, Georges de Marais, and you can also see his two main collaborators, his son, Carl Gustav, down there, and on the upper part to the right, Karl Holman, who was uh, educated by a nephew of André Le Nôtre, Claude de Gaulle, in, in Paris in the 1720s. First, they had in mind to, to recruit uh, important artists for the interior decoration like Jean-Baptiste Audry and Jean-Baptiste Pater, but none of them wanted to go to Stockholm. And finally, uh, Horleman managed to recruit Guillaume Thomas Raphael uh, Taraval, uh, a pupil of Claude Audran, and he was responsible for, among other things, the interior decoration of, of the Royal Chapel, as you can see here. Another great name uh, that was associated with the, uh, uh, the Royal Palace in Stockholm was the sculptor Jacques-Philippe Bouchardon, whose services Tissin managed to engage in Paris in 1741. But unfortunately, uh, Bouchardon, as you can see, a work by him here to, to the left, died prematurely at the age of f f only 44 in 1753. Uh, they made very hard efforts to quickly fill Lacoon, but they were very unsuccessful. So until two years, the contract was signed with Pierre Hubert Larchevêque, who was a pupil of Edme Bouchardon. Amical, euh, et aussi évidemment des liens artistiques avec un échange d'artistes, euh, euh, beaucoup de français, d'artistes français qui travaillaient aussi à Stockholm. Euh, il y a euh, un moment, cet cette, euh, échange euh, s'est arrêté euh, à cause de la défaite de la Suède, donc il y avait moins de, de possibilités de mécénat, mais très vite, euh, en 1728, euh, la construction du palais royal a de nouveau appelé des artistes français euh, à Stockholm, dont euh, un grand nom, euh, 
très simple. Euh, aussi Georges de Marais, euh, il a bien vrai le nôtre, euh, et puis Caraval, euh, il a vu le grand, et le sculpteur euh, Bouchardon. Euh, donc je pense que c'est surtout une question de voir comment il y a eu euh, un, un, un lien fort et euh, une participation directe des artistes français euh, dans euh, la décoration de ce palais, la construction de ce palais, qui était évidemment un, un, roi, un, un mécénat royal. Ce qui est assez intéressant, c'est que tous ces artistes français étaient venus avec toute leur famille aussi. Ce n'est pas uniquement les, 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 les artistes, mais avec toute leur, leur famille aussi. Mais in order to, 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 um, and to, the, to the right, uh, that's the monument of Gustavus Adolphus that was created by uh, Pierre Hubert Larchevêque. Um, uh, in order to supply a more long term uh, 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 of, um, supply of Swedish born artists, Uh, an Academy of, of Fine Arts was created in 1735 at the Royal Palace, and, and it was overseen by Guillaume Taraval, uh, and he was succeeded by Bouchardon, and then finally by, by uh, Pierre Hubert Larchevêque, who was put in charge of the Academy because he had a detailed knowledge of the French Royal Academy, and uh, furthermore, he was considered to be a very good teacher. So in 1768, he was given the position of a, a director of the Royal Academy of Fine Arts. Uh, and uh, at the same year, uh, the pupil of Cushin, Per Fluding, uh, was appointed professor. So in that sense, uh, there was a Swedish art academy established uh, that began really to stand on Swedish feet. Well, in our own secular age, it, um, it's surprising that person's religion could be a matter, uh, especially in the 18th century, a century of tolerance. Uh, it could pose problem for a Frenchman living in Stockholm and equally uh, for Swedes in Paris. And what is more, the religious argument crept into and colored both political and a broader cultural views. So when an alliance with France was being negotiated in preparation for a Swedish war of revenge against Russia, that was in 1740, an alliance that also included the Ottoman Empire, voices were raised against a pact with, as they said, pagans and Catholics in Sweden. They made complaints about that. Even language became a political weapon because at a diet of 1771, a representative of the peasant estate in Sweden complained about extensive use of French and Latin words which he wanted to purge from the Swedish language. The discussion feels strangely modern today And in Paris, the Swedish church was an important gathering place for Protestants. Not infrequently, services were held in the Swedish embassy. And here you can see the ambassador Kreutz, Gustav Philipp Kreutz, and his apartment uh, with the furniture under dust cover in the summer, because this was used actually by the church during the summer as a premises for, for uh, religious sermons. Kreutz was a very prominent cultural figure. This is a portrait by Alexandre Rousselin. And it was loved by people like Voltaire, who said of him, I quote, I spent only a day with Count Kreutz, and I would have liked to spend my whole life with him. That's the words of Voltaire. The Swedish church continued to be an important meeting place, not least for many artists, who were not necessarily Protestants. During the terror in the 1790s, it was the chaplain of the Swedish legation who buried the wife of the cabinet mate maker, Jean-Henri Rissener, despite the fact that the family were Catholics. Alors, donc là, dans ces, euh, dans ces 
évidemment avec la Suède de mon profession et la, la France catholique, euh, et il y avait euh, peut-être moins de tolérance qu'aujourd'hui. Euh, à un moment, euh, au moment où la, la France et la Suède ont créé une alliée en 1740 contre la Russie, euh, quand même la question de la religion euh, faisait barrière. Euh, aussi de la, la langue, le fait que euh, le français inter, pouvait s'insérer un peu trop euh, dans le vocabulaire suédois, il y avait des réactions contre ça, euh, ce qui rappelle un peu notre, éventuellement, certains débats d'aujourd'hui. Euh, à Paris même, euh, l'église euh, suédoise était un, un, un important lieu de, de rencontre. Euh, autour de Kretz qui selon Voltaire est un homme extrêmement agréable il aurait voulu passer toute sa vie avec lui euh, au moment de la terreur euh, en 1790 avec Pissemer et là j'ai oublié le point c'est assez curieux que qu'un qu un, 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 un curé protestant a fait, les, a fait ses euh, cérémonies pour enterrer une catholique. Mais c'est la seule possibilité à cette époque-là, quand on a tout à fait interdit la, la religion pendant la terreur. On, on peut utiliser un protestant <rire> pour, pour avoir un, un propre euh, enterrement religieux. Oui. Et ensuite... Uh, although there was more curiosity uh, in Sweden about the French culture than vice versa, relations between the countries were not entirely one-way street. Before 1789, for instance, four Swedish-born artists were admitted to the French Academy of Paintings and Sculpture. And here you can see Charles Bois. Uh, th this is a copy done by himself, a, a, a replica of his reception piece for the, the, uh, the, the Royal French Academy. Uh, and um, uh, Pierre, uh, the, um, Jean Bois, uh, uh, he was um, the, 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 the son of a Huguenot French uh, uh, emigre in Stockholm. Uh, he became a pupil of Pierre Signac, the uh, court anamelist of Queen Christina. Uh, and he shows himself uh, an international cosmopolitan life in London, Vienna, and finally in Paris. And he became the very first Swedish member of the French Academy in 1717. This re required a royal approval because Bois was a Protestant. And the exception made for him was later invoked for the other three Swedes that were elected. Bois who enjoy the patronage of the regent, is perhaps most famous for his portrait miniatures of Peter the Great, produced during the latter's visit in Paris in 1718. He then went to Dresden and he came back in, in, in Paris in 1720, where he got to know the Venetian portrait painter Rosalba Carriera. And the lasting result of this acquaintance was Bois' introduction of his fellow Swede, Gustav Lundberg, himself a pastelist. Lundberg was trained under Rigaud and Largillière, but he went on to adopt the Carrera's technique. And during his 28 years in France, he made a successful career for himself including a period of being a teacher in pastel painting to the king Stanislaus Leczynski. From a French point of view, his name is probably now only associated with, with um, portraits of Bouchy and Natoire. Uh, uh, and you can see here uh, his portraits to the left of Cogosta Tessin uh, that was made in Paris in 1728 when Tessin made his uh, a trip to Paris, a second trip to Paris. And uh, to the right, there's the reception piece, show, uh, uh, the portrait of Bouchy. Uh, and this was done, I think, the, 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 this was only possible through the admission uh, uh, to the intervention of Tessin uh, when he was created a gris and reçu at the one, one single ceremony in the spring of 1741 which was quite 
exceptional. And normally, uh, there was some time to, to elapse between these two occasions. So he returned to Sweden in 1745 and became, became the leading portrait pastelist and portrait, uh, portrait painter. Uh, but um, he never reached the same quality as the years in Paris. Suédois qui venait à Paris, euh, dont Charles Bois, euh, dont euh, la pièce de réception à, à l'Académie euh, royale des Beaux-Arts euh, l'a euh, rendu euh, accès à ce réseau artistique français. Euh, il était fils d'émigré, euh, mais très vite cosmopolite. En 1717, il devient membre euh, de l'Académie. Il est surtout connu euh, pour euh, son portrait de oui. Et euh, après, il part à Dresde en, en 1720. Euh, il est aussi à Venise. Non, 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 non. Il, 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 a, il, il a rencontré Rosalba Carriera. Euh, il, a, il a créé les liens entre Rosalba Carriera et, et euh, Gustav Lundberg, le, le, le peintre pasteliste. Voilà. Donc, ça montre le, le, le milieu très cosmopolite qui était Paris, mais avec euh, euh, la Stockholm, mais évidemment la grande figure, ça devient très sain, euh, qui est surtout connu pour son portrait de boucher ici. Non, 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 ça, 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 ça c'est le, non, non, c'est le portrait de Lundberg de, de Carl Gustav Tessin, et à l'autre côté, c'est le, le morceau de réception de, 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 de Lundberg qui nous montre François Boucher. L'autre, c'est Natoire. Ils sont au Louvre maintenant. Je vous explique, je fais une traduction euh, improvisée. Oui. Euh, je suis 19e liste, et pas du tout, mais j'essaye de mon mieux. Voilà. Oui. Avec l'argument quand même de montrer qu'il oui. y a ces, euh, ces liens très forts. Oui, nous faisons une collaboration voilà. très euh, amicale ici. Oui. Et ensuite... Uh, while Lundberg's work made no very deep impression in French art, there were few artistic careers that could rival that of Alexandre Rosselin or Rosselin. You shall therefore pay, I will really uh, dedicate the, a, a good deal of, of the time to, to, to speak about him as a, he's a very good example. In November 1753, within 18 months, after his arrival in Paris, he was admitted to the academy, uh, and, and that's quite exceptional. Uh, a few months earlier, he was agréé, and uh, uh, he was admitted to, to exhibit at the Salon before he was received in the academy officially. And one could ask, why was this possible? Uh, here one can point out the powerful patron he had in Carl Gustav Tessin, who operated from distance in Stockholm, whose numerous French contacts enabled him to exert his influence, very strong influence. And one of them was the Marquis de l'Hôpital, the French ambassador in Naples, who had been Roselyne's patron in Italy, and who certainly sent reports on Roselyne's successes to Tessin before the artist reached Paris in May 1752. To begin with, Tessin had obviously believed that the artist would return to Sweden after some time. He soon became aware, however, that Sweden could lose Rosalind forever. And I quote now a letter from Tessin to his nephew. One has seen Bois and Lundberg behave in France as if now becoming familiar, as is now becoming familiar with Rosalind. Why is it not being talked about in Sweden? Um, and uh, he, to, to see the, their explanation was the Swedish ignorance uh, that plagued uh, the leading Swedish artists. Uh, Tessin asserted with pride that Sweden could display more good painters than England, <laughs> for, for, for example. But, even the, the, the fine arts were not flourishing in the same way as the natural sciences, and Tessin asked why. And he gives the answer himself. The encouragement needed was not provided in Sweden for the artists. 
Donc, euh, Roslin, euh, de façon étonnante, a fait une carrière fulgurante euh, en France. Il, est venu, devenu, il a pu exposer au salon même avant d'être membre euh, de l'Académie. Euh, et, et Tessin, surtout, il a reconnu ce, ses talents, mais en même temps, il avait peur que la Suède euh, perde un de ses grands artistes. Euh, et euh, Tessin lui-même disait que, en fait, non, euh, la Suède est, est, est vraiment un foyer. Euh, il y a plus de, de, de grands artistes qu'on euh, ah, ouais. peut trouver en Angleterre, par ouais. exemple. Euh, donc, il, il y avait vraiment ce ce désir de mettre la, la capitale de Stockholm euh, sur la carte comme, comme aussi un, un lieu euh, de production artistique euh, important. Um, well, he certainly understood that Rousselin would, would, would stay in Paris and become, uh, and he became very successful in the, in the French artistic circles. This could arouse, arouse admiration at the same time as suspicion when much later a young aristocrat, the, the Count Klaus Julius Ekeblad, visited Roslin's studio in, seven, in May 1770. He deplored the loss to art in Sweden of an artist who had opted to stay abroad, but added uh, that and I quote, after a few years, they are no longer Swedish and speaks of Sweden with a certain content. So, um, as a matter of fact, uh, Blond, prob he didn't probably speak about Rosalind in this case, but about Peter Adolf Hall, the famous uh, miniature painter. Another of Tessin's French friends became Rousselin's most important mentor in Paris, and that was the Comte de Quilius. According to Tessin, there, were there was nobody in Europe whose taste was as assured as that of the Comte de Quilius. He was the most influential member of the French Academy of Art, and, a capacity, uh, and his capacity as the great protagonist of the emerging neoclassicism for the court to kill you, Roslin was almost an ideal painter that, in that uh, he was an artist who allowed himself not uh, 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 to be an artist to allow himself to be directed by the opinions of the patron and the connoisseur. And this was an opinion and an ideal that also found f favor with other like-minded friends like Tessin, but which was nevertheless fiercely criticized, highly criticized in the mid 18th century France. Rousselin was accommodating enough to, be swallow, to swallow his pride to gain the benefits of Comte de Kelly's patronage. And according to Tessin's nephew, Friedrich, the Baron Friedrich Sparre, who arrived in Paris at the same time as a Swedish artist. Comte de Quilis had, and I quote, never before met a person who developed with the steps of a giant. That's the word of Quilis about Roslin. So not only the, his great artistic receptivity and capacity for hard work, but also his willingness to respond to his patron's desires were the qualities that favored Rousselin's career in Paris. Donc, euh, un grand talent, Rousselin, un grand talent, mais euh, en même temps, il y avait, euh, il était ouvert euh, aux, aux, aux désirs et aux attentes de, de ses mécènes, euh, ce qui parfois a provoqué aussi un peu de, euh, un, un certain sentiment de, de, de c'est dommage qu'il aurait pu perdre son identité, euh, ident, euh, sa, sa, son identité artistique euh, propre comme Suédois. C'est ce, par exemple ce que dit un jeune euh, aristocrate officier euh, suédois, Klaus Julius Ekleblad, lorsqu'il visite son studio. Bravo. Euh, C'est ça. Hein? Oui. Et puis euh, surtout, euh, le grand, un des grands, euh, une grande figure. Euh, de ce temps, le comte de Caius, euh, qui était vraiment le euh, représentant du goût français, 
un brochure euh, qui, a, euh, être, euh, qui est un grand euh, supporter de, du néoclassicisme. Il avait une grande euh, admiration euh, pour Hosslin. Euh, euh, et il, il, était, il, a, il a exercé une grande influence. Et donc probablement, c'est cette combinaison de talent euh, de, de Hosslin et sa capacité à, à sentir euh, et s'adapter au milieu euh, français et au mécénat euh, qui le trouvait, il trouvait. One example of how Rosalyn gained favor with the sin was uh, through the commission to paint Spire's portrait. Uh, during the spring of 1754, the subject told his uncle that the Comte de Quilus had on several occasions visited Rosalyn with him and seen the portrait. Uh, and, and uh, in uh, April uh, 1754, he was particularly, uh, gave a lot of details about the, the visit. And then he mentions that Kelius had again made a, a visit later on, expressed his great appreciation, uh, and uh, Ruslin had obviously made numerous alterations and minor reworking uh, of the portraits uh, composition according to the, the advices and directions of Kilius. So he, he interfered really in the creation of this portrait and gave a lot of, of, of detailed uh, uh, advices. Uh, and uh, Tessin, who was waiting impatiently for the result, was obliged nevertheless to accept uh, Ruslin's wish to exhibit this work at the Salon. Uh, so he, he made a lot of complaints about that. It never arrived to Stockholm. Donc c'est preuve de cette flexibilité, de cette réceptivité aux demandes de de son mécène, ce, uh, le, uh, ce portrait. Lorsque le comte de Caius uh, visite l'atelier de Roslin, il lui donne des conseils directs. Il lui demande certaines modifications. Et l'artiste réagit, il, a, il a, accepte, ce qui euh, provoque évidemment un retard. Euh, et euh, donc il y a cette, euh, aussi Tostessin qui dit, mais comme ça il ne va jamais arriver à, à Stockholm. So, so. So, so response when he saw the work was enthusiastic. Its composition was a paraphrase of Aved's a portrait of Tessin painted in Paris 14 years earlier. But Roslin only heard this through Sparre. So in the end, the artist requested a letter from the patron, from Tessin. And this was to be, uh, to be an acknowledgement of his success. Tessin, who was well aware of what the artist needed, wrote a kind of uh, the, the letter he wanted in, in July 1754. And he invoked all the classical rhetoric devices. He first he praised uh, the portrait, and then he followed by a more critical standpoint. And he said as follows to Sin to Roslin Continue, sir, in this manner. No encouragement to do so would be uh, inordinate. In establishing your own reputation, at the same time, you add to Sweden's very chauvinistic attitude. The only thing that I could wish for was a greater degree of rondeur to give the heads more prominence, which would result in the feeling that one st was standing nose to nose with the sitter. That is the opinion of Tessin when he looked at this portrait. It is more than likely that Rosalind made sure that this letter could easily be seen in the studio as the best testimonial and advertisement he could get. His response was that of a courtier. In, Ruslin, in it, Ruslin declared with great politeness that in his painting he had learned a lesson from Tessin's critical observation ever since the letter had arrived during the summer. The criticism of such an experienced connoisseur was something that, and I quote Ruslin, a painter devoted to his art was honored to have received and put into practice. <laughs> Révérence for Tessin. Voilà, correspondance, uh, preuve de cette, de cette relation étroite. En uh, 1754, uh, Tessin écrit une lettre à l'artiste Rosselin, où il, il, de façon très rhétorique, uh, um, 
parle de ce portrait, toutes ses qualités, mais euh, lui conseille quand même d'ajouter un peu plus de, de donner un peu plus de rondeur au visage pour que euh, il, euh, le portrait euh, crée l'impression d'un face à face, du modèle avec euh, avec son spectateur. Donc euh, il, il, il essaye de euh, de lui donner des conseils qui le rendent un peu plus sous les doigts euh, entre guillemets. Et euh, dans, la, dans sa réponse, euh, Roselyne, euh, il accepte euh, aussi de façon très diplomatique ce conseil et il dit qu'un peintre devrait vraiment être honoré euh, de, de pouvoir bénéficier de ce. <laughs> It is clear what qualities paved the way for his success. Roselyne had a great technical skill and according to one contemporary observer possessed, and I quote, the rare gift of never failing and in addition of being able to flatter without sacrificing, sacrificing the likeness, an ability to, so essential in a court painter. Above all, he, he became a great illusionist. Here, here's the portrait, the huge portrait of La, La Comtesse Demont born uh, Duchess uh, of Richelieu, um, rendering costly garments and accessories with a mastery that held a particular appeal to his clients. Among French artists who saw Rousseline as a dangerous rival, there were no doubt loud complaints about discontent. And when Diderot spoke about Goths and, van and Vandals as poor artists, it was Rousseline he was thinking of But while there was a note of protectionism in the critics' thinking, we can also see uh, in it a more fundamental objection. Diderot felt that the narrative element was, clearly reflect was not clearly reflected in the Swedes' composition and expression. According to him, if the underlying action, and I, well, this is it, an example of his great mastery as an illusionist is quite overwhelming. The portrait of, of, of his wife that is on show at the uh, uh, Centre Culturel Suédois in Paris, Hotel de Marne. Um, according to, to, to Diderot, if the underlying action is not shape, not shape the composition of the painting, some of its truth was lost if it was not mirrored in the face of those portrayed, they appeared soulless. This was his view, for instance, when he made a critic about, wrote a critical essay on this portrait, the, the Jennings family, that was on show at the Salon in 1769, or the group portrait of Gustav III and his brothers that was shown in, in the Salon in 1771. If in the, the Jennings family portrait no one appeared to be listening to the notes being played on the keyboard, there was a similar problem with the picture of the three brothers in the Diderot's view. None of the figures seemed interested in the narrative topic of the painting, the plan of the campaign. While Diderot's criticism might seem valid, It was wrong in one respect, and it was the matter of decorum. What a graceful lady could be seen to be perspiring at the same time uh, uh, when she sat at the harpsichord, and what monarch wished to seem under strain as he decided the tactics of a military campaign. Donc, de, cette, cette, euh, ce talent de représenter euh euh, la ressemblance euh, du modèle et sa, la finesse avec laquelle euh, Roslin pouvait peindre les, les visages, les, les étoffes, donc il, un, un grand illusionniste. Euh, euh, pour Diderot, le grand critique euh, d'art français, euh, posait parfois un peu problème parce qu'il disait qu'il y avait un risque de, de perdre le sens narratif du tableau, euh, le fait qu'il était tellement dans la, la représentation euh, des, des, des choses et des, euh, on pouvait peut-être euh, ne plus saisir le sens euh, narratif du tableau euh, mais il y avait cette ré rétorque on disait aussi oui mais ça fait partie du décorum parce que quelle, quelle grande euh, comtesse c'est ça euh, 
ou euh, veut euh, ou, ou quel grand euh, euh, dignitaire veut être, donner l'impression d'être tellement dans l'action que oui, il s'agit d'un roi même d'un roi <rire> il, est, il, est, il, 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 il est pris dans cette action là donc il fallait une certaine distinction qui était aussi en effet de cet illusionnisme oui oui en effet ça c'est un coulage et, et ils, ils ne sont pas présents à Paris au même temps ils sont euh, le, par commencement, l'homme au rouge, le duc euh, Charles, le prince Charles, était, était le premier à Paris et les deux autres sont est venu là après. Donc c'est un, 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 une, une composition assez compliquée et, 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 et un, un sorte de collage, on, on peut dire. Alongside Roselyne was uh, the, the, the most successful uh, Swiss-born uh, artist in Paris. There was also Peter Adolf Hall. This is the self-portrait of, of, of Hall. Uh, how Hall managed in the space of three years between 1766 and 1769 to reinvent miniature painting is one of the great mysteries uh, which art history has not been able to solve really. Just three years after his arrival in Paris, he was accepted as, uh, as an agré to the French Academy, and he was given the honorary title of peintre du cabinet du roi. Unquestionably, an artistic talent and a flexible uh, manner quickly won him many powerful friends, and made he made success as a portraitist. Hal drew inspiration in particular from the study of old masters, such as uh, Rubens and Van Dyck. His miniature painting became increasingly free with the technique uh, of bold, lively brush strokes. His palette also gradually evolved from cold to warm tones, equally innovat in, 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 innovative for miniature painting was Hal's combination of thin watercolor glazes with opaque passages of gouache. His immense skill as a miniaturist quickly made him one of Paris' Paris best paint portrait painters. His marriage to Marie Adelaide de Goubin, the wealthy merchant's daughter from Versailles, and a niece of the painter Jean-Baptiste Audry, further cemented his social position. During his early years in Paris, Hal, like Roslin, had added Le Suédois to his signature. But as he began to feel increasingly French, he dropped the epithet. And before many years, he had elapsed. He was, uh, and before many years had elapsed, he was being accused by his former Swedish friends of looking down on on Sweden and all things Swedish. While this negative opinion may have been entirely unjust. It does nevertheless reflect the suspicion and chauvinism that were, were never far below the surface, either in Sweden or in France. For example, Johan Tobias Sergel, the sculptor, his teacher, Lars Schubeck, had been the target of a, a campaign or a cabal in the Swedish press in the early 1770s. And later on, Roslin suffered a similar attempt to blacken his name a decade later on in the 1780s, quite remarkably, given that he had been firmly established at that time for a quarter of a century. Um, une autre figure très importante uh, uh, qui fait carrière à, uh, en France uh, très vite, c'est presque un mystère comment il a pu uh, faire ça, Peter Adolf Hall. Euh, il réinvente vraiment euh, la peinture de, de miniature. Euh, donc il, euh, il devient agréé de l'académie, puis peintre du cabinet du roi, tout ça en trois ans. Euh, il il s'inspire sur euh, euh, Rubin et Van Dyck, mais euh, très vite développe son propre style en devenant beaucoup plus, plus libre dans la façon euh, dont il utilise euh, la, la, euh, la touche. Et puis son, le passage d'un palais très froid vers un palais, un palais beaucoup plus chaud, euh, la façon dont il applique les glacis et, et les gouaches, donc vraiment un, un talent presque natif. Euh, en même temps, il, euh, il veut s'intégrer dans le milieu français. Il euh, épouse Maria de Laï Goubin, Goubin. Goubin ouais. euh, euh, qui, euh, ce qui fait euh, aide à, à son, son son ascension dans la, euh, la, 
la société française. Euh, il euh, laisse, après quelques temps, il, il, ajoute, il laisse euh, tomber cette, euh, le rajout de le suédois euh, à son nom, donc pour vraiment montrer comment il, a, il fait partie de, de, du, de, du milieu français. Donc tout ça montre qu'il y a un chauvinisme qui est très présent, aussi bien du côté euh, français que suédois. Il y a toujours une, une tension, oui, est-ce qu'il est vraiment français, vraiment suédois. Euh, et c'est aussi le cas pour euh, Rosselin qui va être euh, accusé mmh. plus tard euh, mmh. d'avoir perdu son... son oui, d'accord, il y a une, une nouvelle génération. Euh, B.G. Lebrun, David, etc., qui étaient venus là. Peut-être c'est la cause vraiment de cette cabale contre euh, Rosselin, qui était un old dinosaur. <laughs> Now, ensuite, euh, Rosselin, he managed to ride, ride out the storm, but his second cousin, uh, um, Adolf Ulrich Wertmüller, met with a much greater unpleasantness a few years later on. In his youth, Uh, Roslin had started with uh, uh, first in, in Wertmüller had started first in Paris and later on at the French Academy in Rome, uh, where he shared lodgings with Sargel and, and David was his fellow student at the Academy. When the allowance from his father ended four years later on, Wertmüller was forced to leave Rome uh, and at Roslin's suggestion, he went to Lyon. And I quote a letter from Roslin to Wertmüller. To begin with, you will have to make a name for yourself by selling cheaply, sometimes for nothing, until you have become known and can ask the price you are worth. And he also gave another uh, um, uh, advice, and that was that he should he should uh, rival the patrons when he was when he dressed his outfit his. His accessories would he would rival with the with the clients. That was very important to be a successful portrait painter. Um, Ruslin himself had demonstrated considerable genius in the art of securing well-to-do clients. His advice proved to be spot on as far as the silk trading city of Lyon was concerned with its, with its rich uh, bourgeoisie. In the spring of 1781, Wertmüller returned to Paris, where Rousselin immediately took him under his wing. Two years later on, the Swedish ambassador, as we've seen uh, or heard about earlier, Gustav Philipp Kreutz, recognized Wertmüller's talent, and his future success was assured, because he was introduced by the Count to, Gust to Gustav III when he visited Paris in 1784. And he, the king asked for a portrait of Marie Antoinette uh, on, the, on the condition that it would be painted by Wertmüller. The Swedish king was thus in reality both the, the commissioner and the recipient of the portrait of the queen, but he never paid for it. That, that was done by the queen. It is a complicated matter, though. Just before news of this prestigious commission got out, The artist was admitted to the French Academy at the age of 33. Wertmüller's reception piece, his entrance exam, so to say, was two portraits of older academicians uh, of Bachelier and Caffieri. And they are really one of his best works. Sometime after Gustav's uh, departure, Wertmüller started work on the royal portrait making various preliminary studies of Marie Antoinette uh, at Petit Trianon and of her two uh, children. The, the grand portrait itself was painted in David's studio in the Louvre, which was unoccupied during the artist's absence in Rome, where he worked on the oath of the Horatius, of the Horatii. In this spacious facility, Wertmüller had assembled one large and two small mannequins The Queen's outfit, a copy of a coiffure that was done by Monsieur Leonard, uh, and, and, uh, and he made all the preparatory sketches. And, and uh, as you can see, you, you still got a feeling that the, the, this portrait shows a big mannequin and two small ones. They are a bit stiff like that. Uh, 
autre euh, artiste suédois très important, Weltmüller. Euh, Weltmüller. Neveu de Rosla, euh, qui euh, d'abord euh, vient à Paris, euh, il s'inscrit à l'Académie, puis va à l'Académie de Rome, euh, où il euh, fréquente par exemple euh, des Français comme David. Il, il fait donc sa formation dans les académies euh, très établies en Europe et puis euh, il revient à Lyon euh, euh, où euh, il essaye de, de, de commencer sa carrière artistique. Sur les conseils de Ros Roslin, il, euh, euh, il met ses, ses premiers tableaux euh, en, en, sur le marché à des prix dérisoires afin de s'assurer qu'en fait il y trouve un clientèle. Euh, L'autre euh, conseil aussi, c'était de vraiment euh, soigner son, son apparence, de s'habiller aussi richement que ses, ses clients, afin de vraiment euh, cultiver euh, la, le personnage euh, d'un artiste euh, courtois. Donc il réussit, il trouve son clientèle, et euh, un clientèle très bourgeois évidemment à Lyon, et puis en, en 1781, il s'établit à Paris. Euh, là, euh, grâce à Kreutz, l'ambassadeur dont on a déjà parlé, il peut faire une rencontre avec le roi euh, suédois Gustave III, euh, qui euh, visite euh, son atelier, vraiment, oui, euh, en 1784, et lui commande en fait un portrait euh, de Marie-Antoinette. Euh, donc euh, il est euh, commandataire et aussi bien euh, récepteur de ce portrait, bien qu'il n'ait jamais payé. Euh, donc à l'âge de 30, euh, 38 ans, 33, 33 ans, euh, Bert Muller rentre vraiment à l'académie euh, comme membre. Euh, il profite de l'absence de David à Rome, lorsque David est à Rome pour euh, faire les serments de, de grâce pour euh, commencer à travailler ce portrait euh, de Marie-Antoinette avec ses enfants à l'aide de mannequins et aussi d'une perruque. Oui, oui, et, et le, le coiffure et, et le, the, the big hat, Turkish hat, on, on the top. Chapeau, ce yes. chapeau étonnant, euh, mais on voit qu'il s'agit de mannequins à cause un peu de la disproportion euh, des personnages. Well, when the portrait of Marie Antoinette and her children was shown at the salon in August 1785, Weitmiller was deeply disappointed at the response. The critics were harsh and evil. Even the royal city was dubious about the result. On seeing the painting, Marie Antoinette is said to have exclaimed, Quoi, c'est moi là? Uh, the, the artist himself put this negative reception down to jealousy on parts of his um, colleagues. Uh, they could not stomach the fact that a young Swedish artist uh, uh, who, who was even audacious to sign his works, Le Suédois, like Ruslin, had been entrusted uh, such a prestigious commission. For six months, Wertmiller was unable to work. He was strongly depressed. He later reworked his portrait of the Queen, but the damage of the campaign against him had caused, could not be undone. On the other hand, uh, um, the, the furore of the painting had given uh, Wertmüller an, 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 an idea of the forthcoming disaster, the revolution. To, and in 1788, he moved to Bordeaux, where he found uh, new clients, wealthy clients in the city. And finally, he left France in 1790 for Spain, for Madrid, And four years later on, he left for the old, the old world to settle down in the United States, where he became a peasant in Delaware. It's quite quite odd career, as a matter of fact. I, I'll just show you here the last uh, the, the the picture he made for Madame de Campan, uh, the the son of Madame de Campan. Uh, because Madame de Campan was a very important person in the case of Wertmüller. She was instrumental because she, who had looked after the, the private uh, money of the Queen, she, it was she that arranged for the payment, actually. And she had, there was a direct contact between uh, 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 Wertmüller and Madame de Campan through an intermediary of a Swedish official who worked in the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Versailles. 
Monsieur Lindblom, who acted as, as a sort of spy in between, is, is, a, is a very interesting story, the, the creation of this portrait. And as, as a kind of, of uh, um, a token of his, uh, um, uh, of, of, of the, the help she gave him, Wert Müller, he painted this portrait that is now in the in the in National Museum in Stockholm, and uh, it shows the, the little son of Madame de Campon uh, in the gardens of, of their uh, summer house outside Versailles with a little dog. It was, it, they were very discreet. When it was shown at the salon, it was just yes, said, un portrait de, de Monsieur XXX. So um, they didn't want really to, 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 to show who this was, to, to, to indicate the, 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 the close relation with the painter and, and the queen, of course. Alors, le, le portrait de Marie-Antoinette n'a pas euh, connu beaucoup de, de succès, quelque part. Marie-Antoinette elle-même euh, n'était pas très contente. Et euh, de, du côté des artistes suédois, il y avait beaucoup de jalousie que quelqu'un aussi jeune, quelque part, pouvait... Mais surtout parmi les Français. Parmi les Français. Oh là là. Ah, évidemment. Les, 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 les Suédois ne connaissent pas évidemment. cette situation. Oui, que, que ce Suédois, ce petit Suédois, pouvait euh, avoir cette commande. Euh, donc, c'est une période de jalousie qui est un peu un désastre pour la, son, son, sa carrière à Paris. Et, et euh, après six mois, il, euh, il quitte et il va à Bordeaux où il trouve un, un autre clientèle très riche. Euh, puis, il, euh, en, en 1790, il euh, décide de, de partir, évidemment, émigrer en, euh, à Madrid, euh, la révolution étant euh, là. Et euh, il, quatre ans plus tard, il part aux États-Unis où il devient euh, paysan, euh, agriculteur. Oui, oui, c'est ça. Et il even became blind. He ended to be blind. Yes, really pity. À Delaware, où il y avait beaucoup de Français d'ailleurs qui, oui. qui étaient émigrés euh, là. Euh, un autre portrait de lui, un joli euh, petit tableau qui maintenant est au National Museum à Stockholm, représente le fils de Madame de Campan euh, dans le jardin de leur euh, manoir, je suppose près de Versailles. Et il y avait une. une Madame de Campan qui était très proche de Marie-Antoinette et donc il y avait euh, un, un surintendant suédois qui assurait un peu l'intermédiation. Euh, elle, 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 elle a travaillé au, au ministère des Affaires étrangères. Oui, oui, elle était inter, interpréteur. Interpréteur. Oui, translator. Voilà. Et donc il, il fait euh, ce, ce tableau ravissant mais sans euh, l'identifier. Portrait de XXX parce que c'était évidemment déjà euh, délicat d'afficher ses relations avec la ressource. Oui. Vert oui. uh, I will end now soon. Vert Miller's career never covered from this failure in Paris because of, of this opposition in the. <coughs> Uh, and, and it encounters, you know, the, the, the difficulty, the, the conflict between the, the, the elite. Uh, patrons, commissioners, and the interests of the native French artist. But as already shown, the success of his cousin, uh, Roseline, was instead complete. Roseline is um, uh, a Swede um, <clears throat> who combined artistic virtuosity with an adequate interaction with the wishes of the, the commissioners, of the patrons. Uh, um, and um, um, uh, he, he, um, his uh, great-grandson, uh, Charles uh, Rousselin, uh, proudly s spoke about his uh, great-grandfather that he earned more than 600,000 livres from his art and uh, in addition he received gifts of the value 100,000 livres. Despite the revolution chaos of his final years, Roslin seemed to have managed to lead a normal life and, what is more, to preserve his wealth intact. An artist who had been the leading portraitist of the hated ruling aristocratic class could have been denounced as guilty by association. The possibility came 
very uh, became very dangerous for him in the summer of 1793 when the the uh, when the national convention passed the loi des suspects under which many artists would come to grief however Rousseline died that july in his flat in the louvre without having to face discredit as a symbol of the ancien regime that very fact though also helped could to consign him to the shadows of history, and during the first half of the, of the 19th century was largely or completely forgotten in France. Thank you very much. Yeah. It was quite exceptional. The, the, um, uh, the boy, uh, Rouquet, uh, was a Swiss artist, was uh, ad admitted at the same time as Rousselin. Then he went to, to England quite quickly. He was an anomalous. But, but th this, this was quite rare. It's quite exceptional as a case. And of course, I mean, after 18 months only in Paris, it's quite exceptional. How could you explain it? Well, it, one of the explanation is certainly his technical skill, of course, his, his social skill, and that he had very mighty uh, uh, um, uh, mentors, patrons, like Tessin and Caelus, and he was a close friend of Vien, who was the leading neoclassical artist. They are met in, in Rome, so that you know, he, this is a combination of technical skill and social ability that create this, this position. So he is a very good example of, of, of an entrepreneur, uh, an artist as an entrepreneur, really. It's, it's quite, quite exceptional. Yes. Yes? En effet, il est, il est rentré en Suède. Euh, mais le problème, c'est qu'il que, euh, euh, y avait un autre euh, portraitiste qui était, euh, euh, a fait sa carrière en, en Angleterre, qui a introduit la manière de Reynolds. Et ça, c'est un clash. Et il n'a pas ré pu réussir à cause de cette nouvelle mode de Von Breda, qui était, euh, qui était élève de, de Reynolds. Et à cause de ça, il a, il a dû rentrer en, 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 en États-Unis pour la deuxième fois. Il a terminé comme un pauvre agriculteur et un blind man. C'est le poor, poor end of his life. <rire> eh bien, on va terminer. Merci. Merci.